I know everyone always says their marriage didn't start out this bad, but I promise you in my case it's completely true. I met my husband when I was in my early 20s, and we immediately fell in love. Our relationship moved quickly after that, and it wasn't long before we got married and settled down. I never saw any worrying signs. Everything was so normal and cliché. We had the house with the white picket fence. My husband was a lawyer and made a very steady income. There weren't any problems at all back then. A few years into our marriage, we had a son, and that only made things better. He was our pride and joy, and the three of us all got along great. Again, we were just a normal, happy family. Then everything started to change. Over the years, my husband became different. He started acting controlling and angry all the time. There were very few days where he didn't yell at me or our son, and he never used to yell before. I don't know what happened. He just went completely psycho somehow. It wasn't just his behavior either. He started shaving his head and face to make himself completely bald. It happened out of the blue too. One day he had a full head of hair and a beard, and the next day he was totally hairless. I didn't know what had gotten into him. At first, I just thought it was some bizarre midlife crisis and he would eventually snap out of it, but he just kept getting worse. He acted like a lunatic more and more each day. I never knew what was going to happen next with him. One minute he would be calm and then the next minute he'd be flying off the handle or acting so immature that I would almost forget that he was in his 40s. My son and I actually became scared of him. After it had been going on for a while, I began to want a divorce. He just wasn't the man that I'd married anymore. The problem was that I was too scared to tell him because I thought he would snap. If even little things could make him go into a rage, then I didn't want to find out what asking for a divorce would do. Still. I don't think that you could really say that we were married by that point. I avoided him as much as possible, and barely even spoke to him unless I had to. I even started sleeping in my son's room so that I wouldn't have to share a bed with the freak. Plus, I was afraid that my husband might hurt our son when he was on one of his rampages. Living with him made every day a nightmare. Not only was he angry and unreasonable, but he was also just creepy as hell. The way he shaved his head made him look like a different person, and he was always passive-aggressive in the most horrifying way. Sometimes he would come out of nowhere and start petting me or my son's head. Then he would say things like, I'm not gonna hurt you. I wouldn't do that. Then he would smile like a creep afterwards and stare at us until we were able to get away. It was the most uncomfortable and disturbing thing ever. Every once in a while, I would actually lose it myself around him. I would tell him to screw off and leave us alone. Or I would just take our son and leave for the day without telling him. I didn't do it too often though, because whenever I did, my husband would snap and throw a huge fit that I would have to deal with later. He really had gone completely haywire. Then one night, I finally decided that I'd had enough. It was extremely late, and my son and I had to be up early the next day for work and school. We were both sound asleep when we were suddenly awakened by incredibly loud noises coming from downstairs. We could hear my husband laughing like a maniac and banging a bunch of stuff around. At first, I was just going to ignore it like I'd been ignoring everything else that my husband did. But then I decided that it couldn't go on anymore. I was so tired of him ruining everything. I got out of bed and headed downstairs to confront my husband. My son followed behind me. When we got downstairs, we found my husband standing in the dining room, banging on the table and laughing like a psycho. He had obviously completely lost his mind. What the hell are you doing? It's the middle of the night! He stopped what he was doing and turned around as I yelled at him. I noticed then that he had some hair growing out of his head again. It was really messy and made him look even more psychotic. I thought for a second that he was going to start screaming, but he just stood there quietly and stared at us. I didn't know what was going on in his mind, but the silence was even more scary than him yelling. As he continued to stare at us creepily, I slowly started backing away towards my son. What are you... Then, out of nowhere, he suddenly pulled out a knife and lunged at us. <laughs> 911, what's your emergency? I think you better come over and clean up my family's mess. What's the problem, sir? Did you or somebody else do something to them? I'm not gonna hurt them. 
I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Sir? <laughs> All right? Hello? This story was inspired by a man named Alex Murdoch, who appeared to have a shaved head in a prison jumpsuit in his booking mug shop. The man was notorious on the internet for looking exactly like the famous Mr. Clean, but more notable for his heinous actions. On June 7th of 2021, Alex was accused of taking out his family. He was a disgraced lawyer gone mad and was sentenced to two consecutive life terms in prison and sent to one of the state's maximum security prisons. During the court here, Alex would repeatedly say something along the lines of, I would never hurt them, over and over again. The judge said it was sad to see the defendant go from a lawyer who had practiced before him to a grieving father to a murderer. I didn't meet either of my biological parents until I was in my 20s. I was adopted when I was only two years old, and I've been with my adopted family ever since. I never knew my birth parents. Once I got older though, I started to be more curious about them. So more recently, I located my biological father and reconnected with him. It was pretty awkward between us at first, but after a few weeks of spending time together, it got a lot better. There was only one problem. I had been dating this one guy for quite some time. He was a good bit older than me, but it worked out well. His age didn't really bother me, but ever since I started reconnecting with my biological father, things became very strange. Whenever I brought my boyfriend around my father, he would always act like a total jerk and get angry over the stupidest things. When I confronted him about it, all he would say is that he really didn't like my father for some reason. He never gave me any more information than that, even when I pressed him. But he continued to act differently whenever my father came around. They were both really important to me, and it didn't seem fair that I couldn't see them at the same time just because my boyfriend was being a jerk. Still, it wasn't an easy thing to get around. One night, when I was with my boyfriend, I got a call from my dad, inviting me and my boyfriend to a family dinner at his house on Valentine's Day. I thought it was a little strange to have a family dinner on Valentine's Day, but I didn't want to say no since I was afraid it would hurt my dad's feelings. The only problem was I didn't know what my boyfriend would think. When I told him about the plans, he responded a lot better than I expected. After hesitating at first, he agreed to go when I told him that it was important to me. I knew that it would probably be a little awkward, but I really wanted my boyfriend to get over his strange feelings towards my dad. I hoped that the family dinner might do the trick. When Valentine's Day arrived, my dad came and picked me and my boyfriend up in his car. My half-sister was with him. I'd only met her a couple of times, but she seemed cool so I was excited to get to know her better. My dad lived a few hours away from us, so we had a pretty long drive. Finally, we arrived at my dad's house and sat down for dinner. It wasn't much better once we started eating either. The whole atmosphere was eerie and awkward for everyone. No one seemed comfortable. Even my dad was acting strange and quiet. Then, after no one had said anything for several minutes, my dad suddenly asked my boyfriend if he wanted more wine. My boyfriend agreed, but he seemed kind of scared about it for some reason. Everyone was so tense. I regretted agreeing to the evening in the first place, but I didn't know how to leave without being rude. My dad came back with wine and went to pour some in my boyfriend's glass. Then, out of nowhere, he smashed the bottle over my boyfriend's head. The next thing I knew, I was helping my sister dig a hole in the backyard. I was scared as hell. Then my dad came outside carrying a huge bag and threw it inside the hole. Keep digging! You need to bury the whole thing! My hands were shaking, and I started to cry, but I did as he said. I looked over at my sister to see that she was feeling the same, but she too continued to dig. We didn't have any other choice. Several days later, I was still at my dad's house. Each day had been a nightmare, as my dad somehow got progressively more scary and mad. I just didn't know where else to go. I felt totally trapped. Then one day, my dad was watching TV and getting drunk when he suddenly yelled at me and my sister to come downstairs. 
When we got there, he handed me a machete and told us that we had to go out and butcher the remains, then bury them again. He didn't want to risk anyone finding the body and recognizing it. We were terrified, but we did as we were told once again and headed to the backyard with the machete. A few hours later, we came back inside the house, both covered in blood. My dad told us to never say a word to anyone, and then he told my sister to run upstairs and shower. She immediately did so, obviously happy to be able to clean the disgusting filth off of herself. When the shower turned on, my dad suddenly stood up and walked over to me. He had a strange look in his eye as he got closer and closer. Then he slowly leaned in and kissed me. I resisted at first, but then I gave in. I realized then why he wanted my boyfriend out of the way. It all made sense. A few months after that, we got married. I don't know how it ever got to that point, but it just seemed right. It took something completely horrible to get us there, but it was all worth it. Unfortunately, it couldn't last. A few weeks after our wedding, the police came knocking at our door. Apparently, we were all under arrest for suspicion of murder. My boyfriend hadn't been seen in a long time, and we were the last people to be with him. The trial lasted a while, but my family and I were all eventually convicted and sent to prison. I've been here for almost a year now, and I won't be getting out anytime soon, all because of our deadly love triangle. In 2019, a love triangle involving a woman named Amanda McClure, her then-boyfriend named John McGuire, and her birth father Larry McClure led to a horrific Valentine's Day night. Amanda was adopted as a child and had recently reunited with the birth father and her sister Anna. The father and sister picked Amanda and her boyfriend up from their Indiana residence. The group traveled back to Larry's home in West Virginia. While the visit initially went well, after a week, the father and two daughters began to plot the boyfriend's demise. On the day of Valentine's, the boyfriend was struck with a wine bottle, sedated, and tortured for two days before burying him in the backyard. They dug up his remains and dismembered them. Approximately three weeks after the ordeal, Amanda and her father got married. The body was later discovered, and all three suspects were immediately taken into custody and charged accordingly. Let me get some lettuce and some tomatoes with salt and pepper on them. Gotcha. Hello, sir. I'll be right with you. Hurry up! I'm not gonna wait all day! I'm almost done with his sandwich, sir. It'll just be a minute. Then do it faster! I want it now! Sir, I said it'll be- Hurry up! I want a foot log in my mouth in five minutes or else! Okay, fine! <sighs> You said tomatoes with salt and pepper, right? Uh, yeah. <sighs> Emotional damage! I don't want your stupid tomatoes! I'm hungry! I want real food! Well, the tomatoes aren't for you. They're for him! Okay, never mind. He's gone now! Serve me! One second, sir. <sighs> What are you doing? The food is over here! I have to put on a new set of gloves between orders. It's store policy. I don't care about stupid germs! I'm used to going down on hose! Just get over here already! Before I jump over the counter and rip you in half! I I'm here. What do you want? Ham and cheese footlong! With lots of ham and cheese! What kind of bread? White bread! Okay, okay. What kind of cheese, sir? Provolone! Okay. If you ask me one more stupid question, I swear to God I will rip your heart out of your chest with my bare hands! Alright. Can't you go any faster? I'm trying! Try harder! I'm starving! Now I know why I had to wait forever for you to take my order! 
I'm going as fast as I can! Then you suck at your job! Ah! Hurry the hell up before I eat you, dipshit! That's not the first time I've heard that before! What are you waiting for? D do you want it toast? No! Ah! I said no more stupid questions! I'm sorry! I just have to ask! I don't care! Get a move on! Okay, okay! D do, um, what toppings would you like? Did I say I wanted my ham and cheese with rabbit food? No, I didn't! No toppings! O okay, that's great. C condiments? Mayo! C can you repeat that? The shit your husband squirts in your face at night! I want mayo! Ah! All right! <laughs> So sorry! I'll make you another one for free! Please stop! Don't hurt me! You won't feel a thing! I'll rip your head clean off! Please describe the nature of your emergency. Some psycho is trying to kill me! I'm trapped in the bathroom! Where are you, ma'am? The subway on 2nd and Pine! Please hurry. He's in here with me. Stay calm, ma'am. Help is on the way. By the time they get here, you'll already be in six different pieces. This story was inspired by a case regarding a man named Melvin Williams, who was accused of taking out a 26-year-old woman and injuring her co-worker over an alleged argument about condiments on his Subway sandwich. It was alleged that the dispute was about quote-unquote too much mayonnaise on his sandwich. Williams decided to escalate the situation from there, and that's when all hell broke loose. The case of course went viral because of how minuscule and stupid the dispute was. The suspect was eventually taken into custody and sentenced accordingly. Enter Bruno Mars, the man on the ticket, the smoothest voice in the music industry. <laughs> I want to be a millionaire so freaking bad. I need to scale more women. Oh, so sad. Oh, come on. Not now. Oh, uh... Hey there, beautiful. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, Bruno! Oh, you look so hot! I can't wait to see you! Neither can I, my love. Are you on your way? Yes, yes, I'm just a few minutes out. Are you already there? Yeah, I came early and got us a table. You came early? <laughs> That's not going to be the last time I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I'll see you then. <sighs> All right, this could actually work. She's totally clueless. I only have to keep this going until I get one more check. I already got 100000 from the old fart, and I could use more of that retirement money. <laughs> I just have to warm up a bit. Cause, girl, you're amazing! Just the way you are! Hey, Hollywood, wrap it up already! I gotta take a dump! <clears throat> okay. Sorry about the wait. <sighs> What am I thinking? I should have never agreed to this. Maybe there's still time to make a run for it. Well, someone's excited to see me. Come here. Uh, hi. Oh, it's so good to finally see you in person. You look 
look a little different. Is your skin darker? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, well, uh, you know, I I've been getting a lot of sun on tour. Developed a bit of a tan, I guess. Oh, I see. Um, <clears throat> here, take a seat. Why, thank you. Such a gentleman. You know, I may have to take out the dancers just for you later, because I bet that's what you like. But of course, uh, the lady must be treated with respect. Oh, please. I bet you don't treat your groupies the same way. <laughs> what do you mean by that? I'll give you a hint. I want to be your groupie, and I want you to pull something of mine that rhymes with chair. <laughs> Uh, l let's not get ahead of ourselves, okay? I gotta finish taking you out to dinner first. Uh, e excuse me, waiter? How may I help you? We're ready to order. Wonderful. Can I get you started with any drinks? I'd like to order a bottle of your finest red wine, and then, uh, let's see. I'll have the margarita flatbread pizza, the fettuccine alfredo with chicken, the smokehouse barbecue burger, the seared ahi tuna, and the filet mignon, medium rare. Okay, and for you, sir? Um, I'll have a steak medium rare as well, and some carrots on the side. Of course, your food will be right out in just a moment. So, you're gonna let me backstage so I can watch that tight butt move around while you dance, right? Oh, you want to go on tour with me? <gasps> well, yeah. Didn't you say you wanted to be together? I'm not just going to be alone while you go from city to city going through girl after girl. I want to be the one who gets your 24 karat magic. You see, that might be a little bit of a problem because, well, I, I don't control who goes backstage. My bodyguards were in charge of that. What? You brutal mouth! Your employees don't listen to you! It's complicated. A lot goes into running a tour. I mean, I don't even understand all of it. Shut up! Are you even Bruno Mars? Of course I am. Then sing for me! What? Sing for me now or I'll make sure you never talk to the moon again! I would catch a grenade for ya. I would do anything for ya. What the hell was that shit? You're not Bruno Mars, you dirty liar! Calm down, we can talk about this. You wanna talk? I gave you a hundred thousand dollars! I want my money back! Do you hear me? Stop, please! You lying, cheating scumbag! I swear, I'll give you your money back! I knew you were lazy from that song you made! What's this? It's a letter from her. Hey, scumbag! They just let me off with a fine, so I thought I'd write to you in prison. Just wanted to say I hope you rot. I hope you never get out, and I hope a big, hung inmate crawls into your cot and crams you full of regret 24-7. Or should I say 24-carat magic? <laughs> no! This story was inspired by an incident that happened on Valentine's Day. A man named Chinwendu Azuanwu was connected to a scheme that happened between September and October of 2018 involving a 63-year-old North Texas woman who told police that she created an Instagram profile in search of companionship. She told investigators a person pretending to be Bruno Mars reached out to her and made her believe that he was interested in pursuing a meaningful relationship. Documents state the woman fell in love with the Mars account, and at the time, she believed him to be the real singer because he had sent her multiple texts and photos of the artist while he was on tour. She also told investigators that he wanted to quit the tour to be with her. The Mars account then began asking the woman for money. A few days later, the woman sent a $90,000 deposit into his account, which was later found to be withdrawn down to a zero balance. The man was charged with third-degree felony money laundering and was taken into custody. Hey, how's the punch? I don't know. 
It tastes a little weird. Maybe someone spiked it. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Every single creep and his inbred cousin came out tonight. <laughs> I know, right? This place is a total sausage fest. I guess all the other couples had the right idea not to come. Happy Valentine's, baby! Why don't you come dance with a real man? Don't touch me. Hey, back off, buttface. She doesn't want to dance with you. <laughs> you ever dance with two men at once? I bet she does more than just dance with two men at once. <laughs> Ew, get away from me, you creeps. <gasps> Let's get the hell out of here. I knew we never should have come to this stupid dance. I know, I know. But we're leaving now. No more of those creeps. Yeah. Look, I'm sorry about all that. I had no idea the dance was going to be such a bust. It's fine. It's not your fault other people can't control themselves. I just wish you would have punched him in the face before he had the chance to touch me. Yeah, me too. I swear I will if he tries that again. You better. Come to my car. Let's get out of here, okay? Okay. Where do you want to go? Anywhere but here. Look stressed. Do you want to make out or anything? No, no. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. How about head m massage? Like, like a head massage? Dude, I just need to relax for a few minutes, okay? Forget about that stupid dance. I agree. I just hope your pom pom. I, I, I mean, prom is better than that. <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna go to prom if it's anything like what I just went through. Come on, you're gonna make me dance by myself. Hey, uh, where are you taking us? You know, that one spot I was telling you about. The one where you can see the whole city? Oh, it's about time you took me there. It better live up to my expectations. I'm sure it will. I'm honestly surprised more people don't know about it. It's closer than you'd think. In fact, we're already here. Really? Whoa, it's beautiful. I told you. We can see everybody from here, but nobody can see us. <laughs> What do you mean by that? Well, you know, the spot is very secluded and, uh, good for private things. Come on, really? Right after what happened with that pig? Hey, I I'm not like that guy. I'm just asking if you want to. I I've never done this before and neither have you, so... So what? Well, it's Valentine's Day and we've been together for a while and now here it's just you and me. I, I can't imagine a much better story for our first time. I, I want it to be special. That would be nice, wouldn't it? To be honest, it wasn't in my plans for the night, but um, maybe we could. Really? Wait, what the hell? Um, who's that? I thought you said we'd be alone out here. Because I thought we would be. I don't have a clue who this is. He's got his damn brights on. Maybe we should just get out of here. We can't. He blocked us in. There's no way I could turn around. What's he doing? I can't tell. Wait, he's getting out. Wait, what? Why? I don't know. Maybe he wants to say something. Screw that. Just turn on the car and let's get out of here. I don't care if you have to make a 30-point turn and drive through the bushes. Okay, okay. Oh, God damn it, not now. Come on, hurry, hurry. What the? Where did he go? I don't know. <laughs> what the hell? Where did he go? Valentine's You're Day! Psycho. <laughs> Help me! Help! <laughs> it's been three days since high school senior Carla Walker went missing after her boyfriend was left with severe head trauma. This morning, the body of a young female was found in the ditch directly behind me. Just moments ago, the medical examiner confirmed the worst. At this time, the police and the grieving family of Carla Walker are urgently asking the public to come forward with any information they have that can help solve what is now a case of homicide. In 1974, a female named Carla Walker was taken from her boyfriend's car after a Valentine's Day dance. Her boyfriend was knocked unconscious while Carla was abducted. 
Her body was found in a ditch three days later. Allegedly, Walker had suffered two days of torture prior to all of this. While the authorities have named persons of interest, no charges ever were made and the case went cold. In 2020, investigators were able to build a full DNA profile of the suspect using new technology. This new evidence allowed investigators to match DNA to one of their previous persons of interest, Glenn McCurley. Now 77, was officially charged and sentenced to life in prison. Hey, what's up? Is something wrong? Yeah, I'm at the address, but something's not right. This client lives in the middle of nowhere. Don't worry, you'll be compensated for the gas, and I'll make sure you get paid overtime for working late. Normally, I wouldn't accept a job like this, but it was described as a cleaning emergency, so I think I can get a big fee out of the guy. Who's the guy? Some older rich dude, by the sounds of it, lives alone. He said he wouldn't be home, though. There should be a key under the doormat. Don't overthink it, alright? Just clean up and go home. Well, alright. I'll text you when I'm done. Sounds good. I'll see you tomorrow. What the hell is this place? I better not have to clean this whole place by myself. This is ridiculous. Of course, I drove all the way out here for nothing. Thanks a lot, boss. Might as well see if anyone's home. <sighs> Jesus! You scared me! Are, are you the owner of the house? That's me. Come inside. Uh, uh oh, okay. I was told you wouldn't be home. There's no time for chit-chat. You should really get started. I recommend starting with the washrooms. The toilet got clogged right before you came. Uh, sure, sir. Follow me. Whoa, it's, uh... It looks, look, it looks like a lot of work. Well then, get started! I'm paying you by the hour! All right, all right. Oh, God. Scrub faster! I thought you were good at this! I just got started. Give me a, <laughs> a, a break. Well, hurry up. If this isn't done by tonight, you people aren't getting a dime. <laughs> You're done with the toilet. Now, unclog the sink. I always have my date shave everything in here before they get into my bed. <laughs> now, drain it. Okay, sir. That's it. Get in there, nice and deep, all the way. You worthless rookie! Clean this shit up before I bleach your insides! Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll clean it up, I swear. Forget it! I'll do it myself, since you can't even do your own job. Just go upstairs and clean the washroom. Uh, okay. Upstairs to the far right. <laughs> what am I paying these people for? Can't even clean a toilet properly. Nobody wants to work anymore these days. Please let this be cleaner than the last one. Oh my god!
on here? I gotta get out! Ah! Does that look like a lot of work to you? Who, who are you? I'm Mr. Clean. And it's time for my bathroom to shine! <laughs> Stay away from me! <laughs> This story was inspired by a horrific case revolving around a man who was found guilty of the slaying of a missing Winnipeg cleaner and has been sentenced to 16 years in prison. The suspect's name is Kyle Pietz, and the victim's name was Eduardo Balaquit. It was alleged that Pietz planned to rob Balaquit while the night cleaner was working alone and later disposed of his remains. Police were unable to determine the cause of his untimely demise. Pietz's lawyers asked for a sentence of 8 to 10 years, arguing that without a cause of death, the Crown is relied on circumstantial evidence. The Crown asked for a sentence of 18 years. I've lived in Oregon my entire life. I used to work hours away from where I lived, and I didn't have a car back then, so I would have to take the bus. I used to have to walk about 15 minutes to get to the bus stop too, so I would always make sure that I left with plenty of time before the bus came. If I missed that first bus, then I would have to wait another 45 minutes for the next one so I wasn't taking any chances. The only problem was that it meant I would sometimes wait a while at the bus stop before the bus actually came, which was fine for most of the year. But in the winter, it was way too cold to stand outside for very long. Luckily, there was a subway right next to the bus stop, so when it got too cold, I would wait inside. It was always too early in the morning for me to actually want anything, but the workers never seemed to mind. They always just let me sit in a corner table out of the way and didn't really bother me. That is, until some new guy started working. The guy was a total Karen. He would always pester me about loitering and say that I had to buy something or he was going to call the cops. I thought it was completely ridiculous, but the guy continued to bother me whenever I went into the store. I tried to ignore him and stand up for myself, but he was relentless. Hey you, you gonna buy a foot long? Um, no sir, I'm just waiting for my bus. Well you better buy a sandwich, or you have to leave, daddy. It was obvious the guy was a Karen, so I just started buying a sub every day just to get the cycle off my back. I was never that hungry when I bought them, but I would eat half of it while I waited for the bus and save the other half for my lunch at work. I was still annoyed that the guy was basically forcing me to spend money, but it was way too cold to stay outside and I figured it would only be for the winter. Even with me buying the subs though, the guy was still a freak around me. He would watch me the whole time I was in the restaurant, like he was making sure that I was actually going to eat the subs. He obviously got some sort of high off harassing me. It honestly weirded me out. He didn't make the subs good either. They were always put together really messily, and they practically fell apart as soon as I picked them up. They also didn't taste very fresh. I don't even know how the guy had a job at Subway. He definitely didn't seem to share the same values. What made it worse was that all of the other workers there seemed to be totally fine. They were all very polite and professional, and all of the subs they made looked way better than the ones that I got. The problem was that the one worker always made sure that he made my sub for me. I had even tried to time it so that I would get someone different, but then he would just switch with that person every time. I started to wonder if the guy was actually obsessed with me. It wasn't just that he would make me bad subs and watch me eat them. He'd usually say strange stuff to me too. Whenever he made my sub, he would act like we had some connection or something. 
Hey, Daddy. How does that foot long taste? Uh, it's fine, sir. I bet that's not the only foot long you eat every day. <laughs> It really freaked me out, and I was starting to consider just waiting for the bus outside in the cold. If I had, then I wouldn't have had to go through what happened next. One day, I went into Subway as usual in order to sub. Of course, the same creepy guy had to make it for me. He seemed especially strange that day too. When he handed me the sub, he smiled at me for an extra long time, like he knew something that I didn't. I ignored the guy and sat down to eat some of the sandwich. At first, everything seemed fine. But after a few bites, it started to taste weird as shit. I didn't know what the hell the guy had done to my sub, but I knew that it wasn't normal. As I opened the bread to see what was going on, I immediately felt sick. There was a rat in my sub, and what was worse was that it was half eaten. I had already taken several bites out of it. Ah, what the hell? <laughs> The creepy worker was laughing like a psycho behind the counter. He had to have done it on purpose. That's when I completely flipped out. I started knocking chairs over and trashing the place while I cussed at the guy. He didn't even seem to care though. He just kept laughing at me. I hopped over the counter and charged at the worker, but he ran off into the back room and locked the door. I had never been more disgusted in my entire life. The guy was completely sick. I banged on the door and screamed at the man to come out and face me, but he wouldn't respond you won't get away with this you piece of shit this is not eating fresh by that point i was so angry that i couldn't control myself i grabbed all of the condiments and threw them all over the place then trashed the whole building after i calmed down a bit i took a picture of the sub and posted it on the internet to expose the man i wanted to make sure that he lost his job since then the picture has gone viral but I never found out whatever happened or became of that guy. All I know is that the man was severely ill in the head and had no business working in any fast food establishment. It's easy to spot what shouldn't be in this Subway sandwich. She put some spinach on it and we both basically saw the mouse at the same time. They both stood there and looked at me the lady behind the counter said it's a dead mouse and I and I laugh I said there's no way no freaking way health officials say they're not sure it's definitely a mouse but you can see the rodent or whatever it is in this picture it was dead for you know it was it was wet and dead so it was most likely in the bag of spinach and just got missed Jay Armstead says the rodent ended up in his sandwich last week as it was getting made at this subway in Lincoln City it was about that big his tail was curled up and he, you could see his two front teeth. Armstead's friend, Matt Jones, was there too. He was the one who took the picture. Yeah, I laughed the most. Jay was in complete utter shock and the lady behind the counter didn't even know what to say or do. So she offered a refund and a new sandwich. And I said, no, I'm good. I'll probably never eat here again. Subway would not go on camera with us, but they sent a statement saying they gave a full refund and launched an investigation. In the statement, it says, quote, to be cautious, all of the products in the sandwich unit were disposed of and a thorough cleaning took place in which the health department gave the restaurant a clean bill of health. It helps to know that it, um, it was, you know, it was, it was just a kind of almost a freak accident. Armstead has maintained a pretty good attitude about what happened and says Subway has handled it well. It was unfortunate. I was just the lucky recipient. For now, Jay Armstead says he's a little wary of spinach. Subway says there were no other complaints made. A spokesperson for the Lincoln County Health Department says that while unappetizing, the risk of someone getting sick is actually very low. They say that the rodent was found in bagged spinach and it did not come from the restaurant itself. Sniper Wolf. She's so beautiful. Just perfect. I wish she would post every single day. I just want to see more of her. I don't know why she doesn't make an OnlyFans. She could make billions doing that. But then again, I wouldn't want anyone else to see her like that. Only I should get to see all of her. Only Sniper can see my third leg. <laughs> God, I'm so thirsty.
It would be better if it was her bath water. Now there's a good idea that was wasted on the wrong person. I should tell her about that. Then maybe I can get a lifetime supply. Dear Sniper Wolf, once again, I would like to begin by saying you are the most gorgeous and perfect specimen of a woman that has ever been born or ever will be born. I'm writing to tell you about an idea I had that I believe will be of great interest to you. Remember that Belle Delphine girl? How she sold her bathwater? I think you should do that too. I know that it would be a much more desirable product than anything she could ever dream of putting out. I myself would like to guzzle an entire gallon and feel it slosh around in my stomach. I think we should meet up or go on a date or something. We can talk about our wedding plans. Uh, I know you're busy, but I have an open schedule. Don't make me have to come and find you. <laughs> so please, write me back this time. Sincerely, your number one fan, Joseph. Joseph! I thought I told you to go outside and get a job! Get off my case, Mom! Can't you see I'm on Zip Recruiter? No, you're not! You're obsessing over that plastic bimbo like always! She doesn't even know you exist! Yes, she does! She's just busy! <laughs> you should be busy making some money and moving out already! I'm sick of doing everything for you! Get off me! Gah! The worst thing that has ever happened to me. I wish I ripped you out when I had the chance. Don't say another word, you dirty cow. Uh, you're sick. You're a sick, psychotic creep. You piece of crap. You better pack your shit or else I'm cutting the internet bill. That's right. Run away. Go jump off a cliff. You'd make my life a whole lot better telling me to get a job. <laughs> I don't need a job. All I need is an internet connection and better Wi-Fi. Oh my god, it's time! She could be uploading soon! <laughs> oh, I'm so excited! I need to put on a tighter pair of pants! <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? Come on, it's been three days since her last upload! There has to be another one today! There has to be! Come on, refresh! 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 Do this to me, Wolf! Don't hold out on me! Yes! Yes, there it is! Hello, friends, it's me. It's You're so beautiful. I love you. Marry me. Let me suck your toes! It's time to react to four true OnlyFans horror stories by Horror Shorts Party. So, <laughs> yes! This is it! This is the best content in the world! Peak YouTube! Yeah! SSS is the best! I love you! I'm number one in the wolf pack! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so funny! I love the reaction the way she wore glasses today! <laughs> huh? What the hell does he want? Piece of crap! Doesn't he know I'm watching Sniper Wolf? Ugh, this better be important! What do you want, idiot? You know I'm watching Sniper Wolf right now? Oh, she did? Let's wait. You know she steals content from other people, right? What are you talking about? Ugh. Dude, everyone was talking about it. All she does anymore is make lazy reaction videos and bait thirsty dudes into giving her watch time by looking like a- SHUT UP! SHUT UP RIGHT NOW! What do you think you're trying to say? All I'm saying is that if she's just gonna stand there and look pretty, then she should make an only- ah! 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 Don't worry, baby. I'll be right back. Big Mouth, I heard you had something to say about my wife! No. 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 I, I was... It's, it's not what it looks like. You piece of shit! You know she's mine! Nobody can have her but me! I still remember when I first met Paul. He was such a great guy, and we hit it off immediately. I was young then in my early 20s, so I think it was easier to fall hard for him. 
It only took us a month to decide to move in together. It seemed like the perfect relationship. Of course, my friends all told me that we were moving too fast and that I should take more time to get to know him, but I didn't want to listen, if only I had. It didn't take long for everything to go bad. Paul started out so kind and understanding, but somehow after we started dating seriously, he completely changed. He became totally psychotic and controlling. At first it was smaller things. He would always decide what we were going to do and would never listen to any of my suggestions. But then he became crazy jealous too. It wouldn't even be stuff that I did either. Paul would practically go on a rampage anytime another guy even glanced in my direction. Sometimes I would have to stop him from attacking some random guy in a bar just because he thought the guy was staring at him. If I tried to talk about it, he would tell me it was my fault and that I was asking for attention. It was absolutely ridiculous. It was the worst when I went somewhere without him. Paul would snap and accuse me of cheating if I didn't call or message him even if I was just out with friends or at my family's house. He was really scary when he was mad too. Sometimes I was even afraid that he would actually attack me. He became so jealous that it was incredibly difficult to do anything apart from him. Then, one night, on Valentine's Day, my friends invited me for a girls' night out to celebrate a friend's birthday. I didn't know what I should do at first, since it was Valentine's Day. But Paul and I hadn't really made any plans, and he was still at work. I finally decided to go out with my friends and deal with Paul being upset later. I really wanted some time away from him anyway. I made sure to text Paul that I was going out, and then I tried to put him out of my mind for the night. I just wanted to have some fun with my friends for once without him ruining everything. Of course, that wasn't going to happen though. Throughout the night, while my friends and I were at a bar, Paul texted me nonstop. When I didn't respond, he started completely freaking out and yelling at me. Where are you? I know you're cheating on me, you bitch! I finally just decided to ignore his text completely. I knew I was going to have to deal with everything later, but I didn't want to put up with it at that moment. Then, the text turned into calls. After the first couple calls, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I was so tired of Paul trying to control me. I decided that I would finish out my night, but I was seriously considering breaking up with him at that point. The problem was I knew it wouldn't be easy. I tried as best as I could to have a good time with my friends, but when it was time to head home, I was scared as shit. I knew Paul was going to completely blow up at me. It was the longest I had ever gone without texting or calling him back, and I didn't know what he was going to do. My friends tried to calm me down and told me that I could grab some clothes and spend the night with them if I needed to. That seemed like a good idea to me but I still had to break up with Paul first. So my friends dropped me off in front of the house and waited for me outside while I slowly walked up to the front door. I was still scared out of my mind, but I was determined to go through with it. I couldn't keep letting Paul control my whole life. When I got to the door, I paused a second to psych myself up. I figured that I would go in and grab my clothes first, and then I would break up with Paul right before I left. I didn't want to give him any time to react. After a final deep breath, I went to open the door. As soon as I opened the door, I found Paul standing directly in the doorway. Paul? What are you- I didn't even have time to react before he grabbed me and yanked me inside, slamming the door behind me. I immediately pushed him away from me and ran to my room to grab some clothes. He was a complete psychopath. I screamed at him and told him that I didn't want to be with him anymore, but that just made him snap even more. He started breaking things and punching holes in the walls while he screamed at me. Ah, ah, ah! You're not gonna get away with this! You can't leave me! I won't let you! He was acting so scary, but I was so fed up with him. I started cussing at him and telling him that it was all his fault. But that just made him go even more berserk. He was going so crazy that I actually thought he might try to kill me. And I was scared shitless. I ran out of the house and jumped into my friend's car as I heard shouting still coming from inside. Ah! I screamed at my friend to get the hell out of there and she started pulling out of the driveway as fast as she could. Just as I thought I was safe, Paul came running like a bat out of hell and jumped onto the car. He started hacking at the car with a knife. He had completely lost his mind. He was stabbing like a maniac. His knife punctured the roof and hit the doors. He was trying everything he could to get at us. My friend tried to swerve and shake him off, but he wouldn't let go. This story was inspired by a deadly Valentine's Day incident that happened in 2011. A breakup between a man named Gibson Paul and his then-girlfriend Tomika Peterson happened on that Valentine's evening. 
Peterson left the apartment she shared with Paul and got into a car with her friends after the ordeal. Paul then snapped and armed himself, letting off at a vehicle which contained Peterson and three other individuals. All victims survived except for Peterson. Paul acted as his own attorney for the start of the trial, later requesting a public defender. Paul was sentenced to life in prison. I used to work at Starbucks. I hated it, but I didn't really have a choice. I needed a job, and they were the only place that would hire me. It might not have been that bad, but I always worked the morning shift. I wasn't a morning person at all, so it was always hard to be at work before 5am every day. I was usually half asleep for the first couple of hours that I was there. It didn't matter how much sleep I had gotten the night before, I just couldn't be fully awake at that time. The managers would get on me sometimes, but I was normally still able to work while half asleep so they didn't care that much. But one morning it was especially bad. I was at work again, and I could barely keep my eyes open. I was practically sleeping on my feet, and about to pass out. It was around 5am. It was totally dead that day. It was a little strange, cause we normally had a lot of customers that early, but that day there was no one. It just made it even harder to stay awake though. I was the one taking orders, so I had nothing to do. Just as I was about to completely fall asleep, a car pulled into the drive-thru. I jumped awake and greeted them. Welcome to Starbucks. What can I get for you? I started getting this really weird order. Some guy asked for a grimace shake. He was obviously just joking around, but I wasn't really in the mood. I annoyedly told him that we didn't serve Grimace Shakes and asked him what he actually wanted, but he just kept pushing the joke and annoying me even more. I'll have a McFlurry. I snapped at him a little and told him that he wasn't at McDonald's. He acted all surprised and said that he needed a second. By that point I was done with the whole situation. The last thing I needed was some guy messing around while I was still half asleep. Finally. He said he was ready, but then he ordered a Slurpee. I totally lost it. I started yelling and cussing at him. Ugh, this isn't 7-Eleven. Either order something real or get the hell out of here. I knew I shouldn't have lost my temper like that, but the guy needed to learn. He was completely wasting my time. Then out of nowhere, the man pulled up to the window and started banging on it. Half of his body was literally hanging out of his car. The guy had to be insane, and he had the most disturbing, scariest face. He looked like a criminal or something. I was terrified. He kept banging on the window and motioning for me to open it. I was so scared. I didn't want to open the window. I didn't know what he would do. He kept taunting me through the window. Open, Cindy. He kept saying that over and over again. It was so creepy. I was petrified. I just wanted him to leave, but he kept repeating that one phrase and motioning for me to open the window. Open, Cindy. I was extremely hesitant, but I figured that it was the only way to get him to leave. I slowly opened the window. The man demanded that I give him coffee. I asked him for the details of his order, and he finally gave them without acting like an annoying jerk like before. Now he was being almost nice. I still felt scared though. I gave the man his total and then realized that it meant I would have to reach my hand out of the window. I gulped and grabbed the card reader with a stick and extended it out the window for the man to pay. The man said that he wanted to use cash because he had enough change. He held his fist out the window towards me and looked at me expectantly. I retreated the card reader back through the window. I was scared shitless because now I was forced to get close to him. I felt incredibly nervous. The guy felt so off. I was scared that he would snap again. The man asked me what I was doing. Are you going to take my money? I didn't know what else to do. It was the only way to get rid of him. I cautiously extended my hand under his to collect the money, being super careful not to touch the creep in the process. He moved his hand down to drop the coins, and I felt a wave of relief that he was going to pay after all. Then he suddenly grabbed my arm. 
He started pulling on me and yanked me so hard I almost completely fell out of the window. I'd never been more scared in my life. I was hanging halfway out of the window, barely hanging on with my other hand. While the psychopath tried to pull me into his car, he glared at me the whole time with the same terrifying face from before. For a second I thought it was over. He was going to pull me into his car and take me away, but I pulled one last time with all the strength I had left, and somehow I managed to break free. I tumbled back through the window and screamed for help. Ah! Help me! He's insane! Help! The man's car sped out of the drive-thru and disappeared as I kept screaming. I called the cops and they immediately came over to investigate. I showed them the footage as proof of what had happened. The man still hasn't been found. I'm still terrified that I'll run into him again. I ended up quitting Starbucks. I couldn't go on living in fear that he would come back there. What scares me most is that there have been several reports of missing women in town. There are rumors that they're being trafficked. I think I was almost one of them. This story was inspired by a disturbing surveillance video of a man who attempted to kidnap a barista by pulling her through a drive through window. Washington police shared a video of the botched abduction online which occurred at a coffee shop after 5 a.m. on a Monday. The attacker, who hasn't been publicly identified, is seen pulling up to the drive through window in a dark-colored Chevy Silverado to pay for his order. When the barista extends her arm out of the store window to give the driver cash, the man grabs the employee's wrists and yanks her forward. She is able to wiggle free from his grasp, but not before the man attempts to secure her wrists with what police called a looped zip tie device. When the barista closes the drive through window, the assailant taps on the glass before he speeds off. Police said they are still searching for the suspect. Up until a few weeks ago, I went to Subway all the time. I work long hours, and I don't really have much time to cook or anything, so Subway was the easiest option. Plus, I usually got off late, so there weren't many places still open. After a while, I got tired of eating there all the time. I'd basically had every sub on the menu, and there weren't enough different toppings to change them that much. I didn't know what else to do, though, so I stuck with it, until one night. I had just gotten off an extra long shift, and I was totally exhausted. I was really hungry too, so I decided to stop off at Subway again on the way home. When I got to the Subway that I usually went to, I was surprised to find that it was closed. It was normally open for a couple more hours, but that night there was some kind of problem that made them close early. I didn't know what else to do. There were no other restaurants close by that were still open, and there was no way that I was cooking that night. I was so tired that I felt like I could barely lift my arm. After checking the GPS, I found that there was another subway that was still open a little down the road. It wasn't necessarily on the way home, but it wasn't too far out of the way, so I decided to head there instead. When I finally got there, the parking lot was totally empty. The whole place looked abandoned, but the open sign was still on, so I parked and headed in. It was empty inside too, and the lighting felt strangely dim. The whole place seemed eerie somehow. I only saw one worker behind the counter. As I walked up to order, I noticed that the guy looked weird as hell. There was just something about him that seemed sketchy. His uniform was all wrinkled and messy, and he had the creepiest look in his eye when I approached. It seemed like he didn't even want me to be in there. He didn't say a word to greet me either. There was no welcome to Subway or even a hi. He just stared at me and waited for me to speak. I almost felt like walking out of there right there and then but I was too hungry to not try and get something to eat first. I ordered a tuna footlong and started telling him what toppings I wanted. The guy still didn't say anything. He only communicated by pointing at stuff, like which bread I wanted, or if I wanted any extra mayo. I wondered if the guy didn't speak English. It was honestly the strangest ordering experience that I'd ever been through. I just went along with the guy not talking, but it felt so awkward and creepy. The entire time I was ordering, the man never took his eyes off me. He maintained eye contact throughout the whole thing, giving me the same weird stare. The guy didn't even look away when he was grabbing the toppings I wanted. It was like he had memorized where every condiment was. I felt so uncomfortable the entire time, but I tried to still be friendly, and I made sure to say thank you and smile a lot while I was ordering. It didn't seem to do much good, however. 
The man still looked at me like I was intruding on his private business. After the man finally finished my sub, he turned his back to me to wrap it up. Then he turned back around and handed me the sub. Surprisingly, he actually smiled at me when I took it. Maybe he felt bad about acting so strangely. I paid for the sub and then took a seat. I was going to just eat it in my car so I wouldn't have to be around the guy anymore. But for whatever reason, I decided to sit down and eat it inside. The man watched me intently from behind the counter while I unwrapped the sub. I didn't know if he just wanted to see if I liked it or if it was just the same weird behavior, but it made me feel uncomfortable either way. I really didn't want to eat the whole thing while the guy stared at me, but I didn't think I could leave after already unwrapping it. I began eating the sub. The sub actually tasted great. It was probably one of the better sandwiches I had had from Subway in a while. I ate more and more of it and started to think that the worker wasn't so bad after all. But as I ate the sub, I suddenly bit down on something sharp. Blood poured out of my mouth as I threw the sandwich down on the table. The worker started laughing at me like a total psycho. I realized that he had to have put something in the sub. <laughs> I tried to cuss at the guy and ask him what he did, but I could barely speak. Blood continued to pour out of my mouth as I screamed some more. As the man continued to laugh, I opened what was left of the sandwich to find something horrifying. There was a knife inside it. I couldn't believe it. The guy was insane. I took a picture of the knife and immediately left the restaurant. After speeding to the ER, I ended up being okay, but the whole ordeal was still terrifying. I have since filed a complaint against the subway. I feel ill about the whole thing. I know it was done intentionally. There was no way that the guy could have accidentally left a knife inside my sub. Nothing has happened since, but I don't go to subway anymore. There's no way that I risk going through something like that again. The story was inspired by an incident that happened at a subway. A 27-year-old man named John Agnesini found a large serrated knife baked into the bread of his 12-inch cold-cut sub. Agnesini bought it from a subway on West 35th Street last month during his lunch break. After taking a few bites, he could tell something didn't taste right and felt something hard on the bottom of the bread, only to find a knife. After eating a good portion of the sub and almost swallowing the metal knife, the man was allegedly ill and had a doctor diagnose him with food poisoning. Agnesini suspected contaminants from the melted plastic handle of the knife seeped into his first bites of the sandwich. What makes this story even more bizarre is how there are multiple similar cases of the same thing. Customers finding knives in their subs and sharing their disturbing revelations with the internet. The man has filed a lawsuit against Subway since. My life was pretty simple. My wife and daughter were the reason I did everything. I worked 50 or 60 hours every week to support them. We had our ways of spending time together as a family. One of our more recent pastimes was going to Starbucks on Sunday mornings. One day, on our way there, it started to snow. It was really light snowfall, but it was more than enough to wow my little girl. Of course, we didn't want to sit inside and keep her away from the snow. And since we had gone out prepared for the cold, we decided to sit outside. Unfortunately, though we had no way of knowing it, there was a shady man sitting outside, hiding his face under a hoodie and vaping obnoxiously loud clouds of smoke all over the seating area. Nobody else was sitting outside because of him. I noticed him staring at my family as we claimed a table on the other side of the patio from him and took a seat. I even watched him take a huge puff of his vape and blow it into our direction as if he was trying to get us to leave. We didn't want to let some random loser ruin our day, so I told my wife to ignore him as I went inside to get our usual order. I remember thinking of what I would say to the guy if he tried to make more trouble. When I came outside about 5 minutes later, there was a noticeable fog. At first, I thought the weather was getting worse, but once I got some up my nose and smelled it, I realized that it was that creepy jerk's fault. He blew a thick vape cloud over the entire patio. I was in disbelief at how petty he was. However, I sat down with my family and did my best to ignore him. I gave my wife and daughter their drinks and started eating the pastry, but when I offered them pieces of it, they didn't want any. 
They weren't having any of their drinks either. They both took one sip and scrunched up their noses. When I took a sip, I realized why. I tried to taste my coffee, but with that vape fog in the air, all I could taste was nasty strawberry banana punch or whatever he was huffing. I gave the creep some dirty looks, hoping that he would get the message that I was a man who didn't want his family messed with, but it didn't do anything. Every time I made an attempt to open a conversation with my wife, it would end with her coughing from all the crap that was in the air. The vapor didn't bother me too much, but it was definitely irritating my wife and daughter, and they were coughing so bad that they could barely get a breath in. All the while, that entitled jerk just kept blowing cloud after cloud in our direction. I kept waiting for him to pass out, but finally, I decided enough was enough. Just because that guy was outside and was allowed to vape, didn't mean that he had the right to cause harm to my little girl. I told my family I would take care of it, then I calmly stood up and walked over to face him. I did my best to come off as a reasonable, respectful neighbor. Little did I know, it would mean nothing to him. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir? Would you mind doing that somewhere else? Just around the corner would be great. And why should I do that? Because I'm asking you to. Please, my daughter's very young and my wife has a sore throat. I guess I'll just ask you to leave me alone before you piss me off. <laughs> Excuse me? What's your problem? I thought I made it clear that you're my problem. Nothing's clear when you keep blowing smoke in my face. Come on, I'm not asking for much. Just walk ten feet that way. Hey, are you threatening me? Don't shout at me unless you want a problem. <laughs> No, no, I'm not threatening you, I'm just trying to talk to you. Good, good, because your wife keeps looking at me like she wants to talk to me too. What did you just say? I said, I think your wife wants me to teach her how to teach her how to French inhale. It's all in the tongue work, baby. I'll show you how. It didn't even take a minute for that punk to get under my skin. I hadn't been that angry in years. I don't know what came over me, but I wasn't about to let somebody who vapes disrespect my family. I didn't care if I looked like a Karen or a crazy person. I wanted to give that piece of crap a piece of my mind. Don't you dare talk to my wife like that, you bottom-feeding scumbag! However, screaming at him would prove to be the biggest mistake of my life. In response, all he did was smile. He smiled and pulled back his coat, revealing a dagger at his waist. I was just waiting for permission. A moment later, that psycho lunged at me with the knife. <clears throat> I jumped back and grabbed his arm to keep him from swinging at me, but that freak was relentless. He forced the knife closer and closer to my throat, and I had to use every ounce of my strength to keep him at bay. I knew my family was in danger, and without hesitation, I was ready to lay my life on the line for them. Get out of here! Both of you! Take our baby and run! Please, just go! Thankfully, my wife listened to me and carried our daughter to safety. As the creep watched them leave, I took my only opportunity to break free and run in the other direction. That psycho was right on my tail, but I knew I had to do whatever it took to get away from him. I ducked around the corner to try and trip him up, but right then, I slipped on a patch of black ice. I spun around the ground just fast enough to see him running towards me. This story was inspired by a disturbing confrontation on the patio of a busy downtown Starbucks. It all started when the victim asked the suspect to not vape near his toddler and fiance. Unfortunately for the victim, the suspect was armed with a knife and took matters into his own hands. A police officer on patrol was flagged down near the cafe and arrested the suspect inside the Starbucks. The scene was captured on video and has gone viral on Instagram and Twitter. The suspect has since been charged and sentenced accordingly. I know it's my fault, but don't blame me. I'm a chronic procrastinator. I always wait to write my jokes until the last minute, and this time, I mean that in the most literal sense. I'll admit, this is not the first time that I found myself backstage, getting ready for a stand-up routine while still writing the jokes for my set. 
but this time, it's different. I've been running out of ideas for a long time, and things are getting desperate. I'd like to have a TV going while I'm writing, so I can pick out good lines from performances by other comedians. Some people call it stealing jokes, but I'm not a fan of that terminology. I really like the jokes that Mark Cuban makes, but my favorite source of comedy right now is Cat Williams. I've been watching what he does in his movie roles, and I gotta say he's got real talent, but hands down, he shines the most in his stand-up routines. I just love his energy. I'm more of a laid-back personality myself, but that's part of what I do to adapt their material into something new. Truth be told, I do feel guilty about taking so much from these other guys, but I'm only doing it because I don't think anyone will notice. I mean, Cat Williams may be hilarious, but I honestly don't think he's that big of a name. I doubt anyone will make the connection, let alone do I think it'll get back to Cat Williams himself. Say what you will about my originality, but you have to admit I'm the fastest in the game. I've learned how to improvise from my tenure on Family Feud. This set only took 20 minutes to write, and I still had one minute to spare. I get a little help from other professionals, too. You're up. Get out there. It's time for the big show. Alright, I'm coming out. And thanks for all the lines. And I ain't talking nose candy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just get a move on, Baldy. Scratch that. I was right on time. With one last look at my material, I was on my way to the big leagues. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that time you've all been waiting for. Let's get ready to chuckle. You know him. You love him. It's Steve Harvey. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, everybody. Let me ask you, how are we all doing tonight? That's what I like to hear. All right, very nice. Let me get a good look at all you beautiful people for a second. I don't know if you know this, but when I perform, I like to get a sense of who I'm performing in front of. Cat Williams? What is he doing here? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I must have ate something. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's get into it. <clears throat> you know, the thing about America today, uh, about being a black man in America, see, when you're a black man in America, you, you, you gotta be hard. That's just how it is. You gotta be hard. But don't we all know somebody who's just hard all the time? <laughs> I mean, you gotta enjoy your life. We all know somebody who's hard even at 7 in the morning. Like, come on, are you angry at breakfast? <laughs> Whoa, hey! Stay away from me! You stole my joke, Mr. Potato Head! This is what you're gonna get! You're not getting away from me, Steve! Leave me alone or I'm calling the insurgents! What a psycho. All I did was riff, man. Why are you so hard in the theater? Come out, come out, wherever you are. I'm gonna find you, Mr. Harvey. A pimp just wanna talk. My God, he's an animal. I'm never stealing his jokes again. How long am I gonna be stuck in here? <gasps> Hello? Who else is in here? <gasps> Kevin Hart, what are you doing in here? And why are you wearing a dress? I was waiting for you, Steve. I want you. What? I want to kiss those thick, shiny lips while I rub the smooth, luscious, shiny head of my palms. Don't you want that, Steve? Don't you want to see what kind of body is underneath this dress? Come on. I want the family feud bonus round. <laughs> Get away from me, you freak! Don't touch me again, you're disgusting! I can't believe you agreed to put on a dress! And for what? A little money? No, Steve. I didn't do it for the money. I did it for you.
On Valentine's Day of 2019, I experienced the most terrifying moment of my life. Things had been leading up to that night for a while. At the time, I lived in a small house by myself. I used to take walks around the neighborhood almost every day to stay active and clear my head. But after a while, I had to stop. I started noticing this creepy older man every time I left the house for a walk. At first, I just noticed him staring at me from across the street. But day by day, things got more serious. If I didn't see him on foot, I would notice the same car slowly passing by me on my walk over and over again. It didn't take long to realize that it was the same creep in the driver's seat. I hoped that switching up my routine would get him off my back, but he apparently didn't have anything better to do than stalk me. Just when I thought I was safe and could enjoy some time alone, he would appear out of nowhere and start making advances. Hi there, beautiful. Could I ask you a question? Who are you? Where did you come from? Would you like to be my woman? Ugh, no, you're disgusting. I could take care of you. You wouldn't have to lift a finger. Let me use my fingers. You're sick and you're a freak. Stop following me. Let me love you! Leave me alone I'm calling the cops! He would lunge at me and try to grab me, but I ran away every time he got too close. It happened several times. The only advantage I had was that he was much older and I was easily able to outrun him. Of course, I knew I was still in danger. He never made himself visible around my house, but if he could find me in any random spot in the neighborhood at any time of day, then there was a very good chance he knew where I lived and that I lived alone. I didn't have space for a roommate and I didn't love going for walks more than I valued my life. So after a while, I knew I had to stay inside the house and keep it locked up. When I needed to leave, I would only use my car and I would keep a bottle of mace clutched in my hand. However, it was around that time that I started to feel truly afraid and trapped. I filed a restraining order against him. It was a double-edged sword. On the one hand, I finally knew his name. I had a written injunction against him in case he tried anything, and he wasn't allowed within 500 feet of my house. On the other hand, if there was any doubt that he knew my address before, the restraining order got rid of it. I never thought I would have a stalker, but I suddenly realized how knowing that there's some psycho creep out there obsessed with you severely changes almost every aspect of life. I became paranoid of every sound, every shadow, every flicker of light. I rarely left the house unless I knew I would be around people, and I tried to have company as often as possible, even if we didn't do anything. The worst part was, I still kept seeing him from the car, and he always stared me down as I passed him. After months of being stalked by him, the early morning of Valentine's Day finally came. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a noise in the house. After a few minutes, I assumed it was just a random creak in the house and I was being paranoid, so I laid down and tried to go back to sleep. I was half awake several moments later when my eyes opened on their own. In the darkness, I saw a blurry figure at the foot of my bed. Fear washed over me as my vision suddenly became clear. It was him! He found his way into my room and was standing just a few feet away from me. Happy Valentine's Day! <coughs> Before I knew it, the psycho jumped on top of me. He tried to take what he wanted, but I fought back with everything I had. I screamed for help even though I knew it was pointless. Eventually, I kicked him hard enough to get him off me. While he was vulnerable for a moment, I kicked him in the face again until he fell off the bed. I got ready to fight more, but when he got up, he just ran away. I was thankful that he didn't have a weapon, but I didn't wait for him to come back with one before grabbing my phone and calling the cops. By the time they arrived, my stalker was long gone but I gave them the description of what happened and how he looked. After a long, stressful Valentine's Day, I finally got a call in the evening from the police station telling me my stalker had been arrested. They slapped a few charges on him and sent him to jail, but I knew that meant he would be roaming the streets again by the end of the year. I took advantage of the valuable time without his presence and got my life back on track. I moved across the city so he wouldn't be able to find me when he got out. Part of me wanted to move clear across the country, but in the end, I knew I would hate it if I allowed him to take my friends and family away from me. These days, I continue to keep my eye out for trouble like him, and I take kickboxing classes in case I ever need to make another creep taste the heel of my boot. The story was inspired by a disturbing Valentine's Day incident that happened in 2019. Cape Coral police say a man was arrested after being accused of breaking into the home of a woman who has a restraining order against him so he could wish her a happy Valentine's Day. According to police, a 38-year-old man named James Carobs Boeing broke into the woman's home and was standing at the end of her bed when she woke up. 
She told James to leave her room and immediately called the police to report the man. The victim has an active restraining order against him which says he can't be within 500 feet of her residence. Before police could arrive to the scene, James left the house in his car and was seen driving off Chiquita Boulevard into a dead end where an officer pulled him over. Ignoring verbal commands from the officer, James drove off and his Honda was located a short time later, abandoned after he fled on foot. An officer later noticed a man matching James' description walking down the street. When approached, he gave a false name to the officer but was eventually identified. He was then slapped with an abundance of charges and sent to jail. school if my daddy is Cat Williams. I should have a private tutor, or at the very least be his private hairstylist when I'm older. Mm. Mm. Ah, daddy, what are you doing in the hallway? What the hell are you doing? Taking a shit for the sixth time again? No, daddy, it's time to go to school. Why are you dressed all fancy for? Are you gonna keep your employees in line again? That's none of your goddamn business. Now when you're old enough to understand the merchandise I got lined up in these streets to pay the goddamn bills, then maybe I'll tell you. I don't understand, Daddy. Are you deaf? Uh, okay, okay. That's what I thought. Now get in the bathroom and brush your teeth, Mr. Milk Breath. Okay, Daddy. I was gonna brush my teeth until you told me to, like you'd even notice the difference. I know you're out of your mind, you crazy old man. I ain't never gonna end up like him. Never in my life. I bet that's why Mom left him. Ain't no one trying to marry a five foot two grown ass man with a man weave that looked better than hers. <laughs> From him no more. <coughs> I bet it ain't shit in there. I bet it ain't nothing at all. I bet you. Daddy! What's wrong with you? Why are you on the stove? It ain't nothing in there. I'm telling you. Nothing. Ain't nothing. Ain't nothing. Dang, Daddy tripping. <sighs> Guess I gotta take care of myself again. really gone useless this time. Yep. Okay, let's see. No! No! Where'd they go? They're gone! <laughs> Daddy! What's wrong, little boy? Daddy, remember you, you put the go-go pups on top of the fridge? Now, <laughs> now, now it's not even up there. Huh? Well, it sure ain't up there. It must have been those damn insurgents. <laughs> what? What's an insurgent, Daddy? Daddy gonna have to call the exterminator, cause some rats must have got up in it. What are you talking about, Daddy? We ain't got no rats. Well now we do, don't we? Who else would've eaten up all the goddamn Cocoa Puffs in one night? Maybe you was out of bed last night and helped yourself when nobody was looking, huh? Were ya? Did ya? No, I bet it was you. You ate all my Cocoa Puffs. You calling me a thief? Yeah! I ain't no thief, I'm a pimp named Slickback! You're crazy, Daddy! Why are you on the love seat if you ain't in love? What are you talking about, Daddy? It's just a couch. I'm talking about stuff you're too dumb to notice. They don't teach you that in school, do they? No, it ain't called a couch. It's called a love seat. Now, are you in love? Uh, no. Then get up off my love seat. 
Daddy, I'm scared. What's wrong with you? Ain't nothing wrong with me. I've been getting stronger every two weeks. I'm sparkling. They call me death. I, I don't want no trouble, Daddy. I just wanted my Cocoa Puffs. Oh, that's all you wanted, huh? Yeah, I swear. I won't talk back anymore. I'm just hungry, Daddy. Well, I know where your Cocoa Puffs are. You do? Yes, I do. You want to see? Yes. They're in. Here! Daddy! Daddy, why? When I was a kid, I used to dream about living in a big fancy mansion with all of my friends. I figured that I would get a great job straight out of college and immediately make a lot of money and be successful. I guess my life turned out a lot differently than I imagined. I didn't end up having a big fancy mansion with all of my friends. No. I lived alone in a tiny apartment in a shitty neighborhood out in the not so good part of town. I didn't have a great job either, though I suppose you could say I was successful. I worked full time out on the streets as a dealer selling to crackheads. I honestly don't fully remember exactly how I'd gotten into that business, but I've been doing it for years, and I built a pretty solid reputation for myself. Everyone in that neighborhood knew where to go if they needed any product. I usually worked on the streets in various locations where I could make deals without being seen. People knew where to find me, and if they didn't, then they had ways to get in contact with me. I hardly ever worked near my apartment though. I always liked to keep my business away from my home since my customers weren't exactly the kind of people that I wanted knowing where I lived. But sometimes my customers would come to my apartment if I didn't have any other way of meeting them. This especially happened with this one guy. The guy was a total crackhead. He had to have been hooked on the product for years. The guy was pretty weird too. I called him Mr. Clean because he was bald and always wore the same white clothes, so he looked exactly like the mascot. The name was rather ironic though, because the guy was actually pretty far from clean. He was totally disgusting. If a roach was ever a person, then it would be him. Mr. Clean came to my apartment often to buy product. I had tried to get him to meet on the street before, but he always refused. He seemed to think that it was too dangerous. I didn't really complain too much since he was a regular customer. The guy was really demanding though. He would always want me to meet on his timetable, and he never cared if I had something else going on when he contacted me. He would just keep texting and calling me over and over until I responded. Obviously, he couldn't go very long without having product. He was a fiend. One night, I had two friends over to hang out. We were just having some beers and enjoying an NBA game. A typical guy's night. The game had only just started when I got a text from Mr. Clean. I knew that he was probably wanting to buy more product, but I ignored it as I just wanted to enjoy my time with the guys. As the night carried on, I kept getting harassed by texts from Mr. Clean. He started sending me one practically every minute. It got to be annoying as hell, but I continued to ignore them. It wasn't often that I had a night off and I didn't want to worry about working right then. But then the text turned into calls. When I didn't pick up the first time, he just kept spamming me over and over again. I finally decided that I couldn't ignore him any longer, and I excused myself to go to the washroom. When I got inside, I answered the phone, really pissed at the crackhead for bothering me so much. What the hell do you want, Mr. Clean? I want some candy from my favorite candy shop. <laughs> just as I expected, Mr. Clean told me that he wanted to buy some product right away. I told him that I wasn't working that night and that he should come by tomorrow, but he kept insisting. I told him no several more times, but it didn't do any good. He even said that he would pay me double and literally begged me to sell it to him that night. I finally folded and agreed to let him come over. Mr. Clean said that he would be there in 10 minutes, so I headed back out and told my friends. We continued watching the game until he arrived. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here! Your favorite baldy is back! Open the door and give me that pina colada, baby! <laughs> when he came inside, it was awkward as hell. My friends weren't used to being around crackheads, so they were really uncomfortable. And this was probably the worst guy for them to be around. He smelled like shit, and he looked deranged. I was used to being around him, but he looked even creepier than usual. I tried to get through the business as quickly as possible, but when I asked Mr. Clean for the money, he didn't give it to me right away. Instead, he just stood there and gave me this strange look. Come on, what are you doing? Then, Mr. Clean lifted his shirt to reveal a firearm on his waist. 
Give me everything you have, right now, before I bleed your heads to hell! My friends and I were scared shitless. We slowly lifted our hands up as the crackhead glared at us, still showing the firearm. I said no! I felt frozen in place as I stared at him. I couldn't wrap my head around what was happening. Then, to my horror, I watched as the guy reached towards his waist. That's when I grabbed a knife from my back pocket and immediately charged at him. <laughs> the next thing I knew, my friends and I were being taken into custody. Mr. Clean was put in an ambulance and taken to the hospital. I never found out what happened to him after that. Later on, my friends and I were charged with possession of narcotics, but all the other charges were dropped since it was labeled self-defense. After that day, I'm a lot more careful with the clients I take on, and I never let any of them come into my apartment anymore. The whole ordeal traumatized me, but I'm glad that I was able to get him first. This story was inspired by a disturbing incident regarding a man named Michael Freshwater. Here's an image of him below. The man had an insanely similar resemblance to the Mr. Clean character. It was alleged that Freshwater had stormed into a flat with a firearm to rob three drug dealers. One of the dealers took matters into his own hands and defended himself using a knife. Freshwater was later found unresponsive. The trio were then arrested but never charged for the crime since they concluded that it was an act of self-defense. Despite not being convicted, the three men were slapped with other narcotic charges. It was mentioned that Freshwater was a regular user who intended to rob the men in the flat that night. no use denying it any longer. My life sucks. I can't afford rent. I can't afford food. I've had to reuse the same bath water for a week. I think I'd get cleaner if I laid down in a gutter. <sighs> That's what it's about, right Jimmy? If I keep recycling bath water and reusing toilet paper, maybe then I can save up for crypto investment. And once that takes off, I'll be rich like you. <clears throat> Stupid flies. <sighs> I'm just kidding myself, aren't I? There's no way I could ever be like you. You live in a mansion with your friends. I only have rats to keep me company. <sighs> hey guys, welcome to the party. See what I mean, Jimmy? What the hell is going on? Oh god, the house is finally collapsing. This is it! Huh? Wh who's out there? Get out of my house! <sighs> Don't come in here! I, I, I'm naked! I'm naked, hairy, and gross! You don't want to mess with me! I'll call the cops! Ah! What? Is anybody there? Hello? That's weird. I must be going crazy in here. <sighs> ah! Mr. Beast? Is that really you? Shut up! Just shut up and listen. Do you want to make a boatload of money? Well, yeah. Shh, but... shh, shh. This is a serious offer. More money than 50. And when I say 50 cent, I'm talking about your mother, cause she's been with many men. Well, at least she does Kegel. Shut up! Five million dollars, if you successfully do what I tell you, kid. Whoa, really? Watch it! The money's not yours yet. You know how this works. You have to win the challenge to earn it. Are you in, or are you out? Well, I guess I'm in. I can't pass up five million. Good, you'll need this. Hey, wait! At least let me get dressed first. You won't need clothes! Just come with me! Uh, okay. Watch your step. Okay, okay. Come on, this way. Okay, Daddy. Don't call me that! Now, in you go! Hey, just give me a second! What's the point of the blindfold? Where are we going? Is this Squid Games or something? You'll see. But I, I don't understand why I'm not allowed no to- No peeking! Okay, sir. You better do what I say if you want to win that money. One more slip up and that's an automatic fail. You hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Good, we're here. Wait, uh, already? You can take the blindfold off now. We're at the cemetery? Just shut up and get out of the car! Follow me. Hurry, get over the fence! Come on, we're almost there. This is 
it. Hold on a second. Let me set up the challenge, okay? Hey, are we allowed to be in here? Why did we have to hop a fence? Uh, there. Are you ready to start the challenge? Um, yeah. If you survive being buried alive for seven days, you win. What? Th that's insane. Nobody could survive for that long. Hey, if you don't want to do it, I'll just find someone else in need. Wait, I, I just... It seems a little... I'll do it. Well, then get in and lay down already. I don't have all night. All right, all right. There you go. That's it. Perfect. Use your prize! Whoa, hey! <laughs> hey! <laughs> Come on! Don't aim for my face! You just hold on to that, and if you make it out alive, it's yours! Are you serious? Stop! I, I don't want to do this! Don't leave me here! <laughs> I can't move a muscle. I can barely breathe. survive like this for seven days? There are bugs everywhere! I can feel them crawling all over me! Why did I have to be naked for this? No, no, I have to stay calm. I have to use my limited air as efficiently as possible. Or else I'll... Wait, what is that? There's a worm on my face! I gotta keep my mouth shut! Go away! Go away, you nasty worm! No, stay away! Stay away from my nose! No, 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 don't go in there! No, no! <coughs> no! What in God's name were you doing in there? It was a challenge for Mr. Beast. He buried me alive for five million dollars. Five million dollars? Yeah, right! Where? Right here. It's all in this briefcase. Huh? What is this? No! 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 I've been working at Starbucks for a few years, but last week I transferred to a different location. One of the old employees went missing and hadn't been seen in a while. The first day I went to the new store, I saw the missing persons poster of the girl plastered on the front door. She was wearing her Starbucks apron in the photo. Suddenly I was having second thoughts about the position all over again. I knew I was replacing someone who had gone missing, and by then it was very unlikely she would ever be seen alive again. The worst part was, she looked a lot like me. I'm not the only one who thought so either. But when I walked inside, all of the baristas in the front did a double take. They stopped what they were doing and stared at me for a few seconds. Just by the looks on their faces, I knew they thought the missing woman had returned for a moment, only to be disappointed that I was just a replacement. As much as we all thought it was weird, they appreciated being back up to full staff again. Over the course of the week, I worked from noon to close, Monday through Friday. On Friday night, business had been slow all day. The boss kept letting the other baristas go home early until it was just me and him in the store. Then, to my surprise, my boss said he was leaving and that he trusted me to close the store on my own. I'm heading out for the night. You can take care of things around here, right? Um, yeah, I got this. Awesome. There's a spare key in my office. Just don't go snooping around. Uh, of course. Have a good night. Good night. I better get overtime for this. <laughs> huh? Uh, hello? Is anyone there? We're closed. Damn it. Did I forget to lock the door or something? <gasps> What the hell was that? No, it can't be. Hello? Is anyone there? Please, let me help you. Just hang on! I'm coming down! Hold on! Please hurry! He'll be here any minute! Who are you talking about? Just come down here! Okay, okay! I'm on my way! I'm in here! <sighs> it's you! What happened? There's no time to explain. You have to get me down from here. Uh, okay, I'll try.
try. Ugh. I can't. It's padlocked. What do you mean you can't? You have to. Just figure it out. Get off of me. I'm just trying to help. I want to be sorry, but I can't. I've been here for weeks. Now hurry before it's too late. Too late for what? No, no. It's too late. You have to hide. Well, where? Somewhere. Just get out of here. I'm back. How's my new favorite employee? Oh god, oh god, oh god! Hello! You haven't been snooping around, have you? Well, I must say, I'm disappointed in you for doing the exact opposite of what I told you! Who opened the door, huh? Was it you? No, it couldn't have been you. Who's been helping you get out of your restraints? Care to tell me? Get away from me, you psycho! Just let me go or kill me already! I'll grant your wish, if you tell me where she's hiding. Shut up! I'm not telling you anything! You know, I have plenty of ways of making you talk. Or maybe, I'll make sure you never talk again. No, no, please, not that! Anything but that! Shut up! You chose this! <laughs> Psychotic scumbag. It's Monday now. Three days after what happened. I'll never go back to that place. I quit Starbucks altogether. I won't be able to get the image of that woman out of my head whenever I see the Starbucks logo for as long as I live. I haven't told anyone about what I saw. I know it was real. But even then, I keep trying to convince myself that it was all a nightmare. I don't know what I should do. If I should tell the police, or if I should go back there and use the keys I stole to free that poor woman myself, if she's even still alive. Maybe I won't do anything. For some reason, that feels like the safest option. In my gut, I know that if I try to do anything, I'm bound to end up just like her. never seen somebody bust down like this before. Yeah, uh. What? Why'd she skip me? Whatever. She was ugly anyway with her big old forehead. Ah, oh, dang, you balding, bruh. Get that Mr. Clean Crystal Ball head off my stream. Next! And who are you? You look greasy as hell, boy. Skinny, uh, pasty, uh, milk toast looking, no spice using kid at the back of the class reaching into his backpack. How about you go outside in the sun and touch some grass? Skip! Whew. I feel like if I stayed with him, he would have traced my IP address or something. You feel me? If that kid goes to your school, you're not safe. <laughs> what is that, Chad? What am I looking at? <laughs> Skip! Skip! What is this? What's happening? Why won't it go away? It keeps getting worse! Are you seeing this, Chad? Am I going crazy? Chad, please tell me you see this too! Make it stop! Please! Please! Why won't it close? Turn off! Turn it off! I don't want to do this anymore! Chat, the stream is over! I'm breaking it! Did that do it? Ah! Ronaldo? Is that you? If it is you, I'll play with your soccer balls. And I'm not talking about the sport. Oh, no, 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 I'm out of here! Wait, what do you mean? Why won't it open? Help! Somebody help me! I'm trapped in here! I can't get out! Help! Man, screw it! Something messed up is going on here. It's that creepy looking kid. It's gotta be. Come on, come on, pick up, pick up! 911, what's your emergency? I, I, I don't know. I was streaming and then my computer just started going crazy. And now I think I'm being attacked by ghosts or something. You gotta send somebody to help me! So you're telling me you need assistance because you're being attacked by ghosts? Yes, yes! I don't care if I sound crazy! I need help! Well, if that's the case, then why don't you let them drag your soul down to Satan's so you can beg him for mercy? Oh! <laughs> 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 
I don't want to die. Please, just leave me alone. Ronaldo, if you can hear me, please help. Please, Ronaldo. Ronaldo! <laughs> No! I can't just hide forever. I'm not going out a whim. Let me just take a peek. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? Wait! Pikachu! <laughs> Y'all might be some demons, but Pikachu's gonna get you. That's right. Pikachu's gonna mess you up! <laughs> Dang, I gotta stop doing that. But, but did it work? Please tell me it did. <coughs> Wait a second. I think it did! Yeah! Take that, ghost! You just got Pikachu! 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 your little mouth shut! Okay, okay, I'm sorry. But I mean, what are you doing in my house? Aren't you supposed to be filming Sidemen? Don't mention Sidemen! Like you know anything about what's going on anyway! Alright? Just look, listen. I came here to tell you that you're doing a good job. Wait, what? That's it? Are you serious? What do you mean? Yeah, you're truly a great content creator. I mean, look at the show you put on for your fans just now. They're gonna clip that, you know? Think of the views. You're making the internet proud. You're making Ronaldo proud too. You really think so? I know so, bruv. Now I better get going. I want to be the first to make a reaction video to this. Wait, I don't understand. What was with the glitching and the demons? Why the whole show? Oh, them? They came to exchange your soul for a lifetime of success. I sold mine too. Just worry about the consequences later. Bye-bye. What? I didn't agree to- Nope, he's gone. <sighs> so I guess I'm in the big leagues now, huh? Don't worry, Ronaldo. I won't let you down. We still streaming, y'all! I'm gonna get the Oculus and we finna play some Beat Saber! I've always told it like it is, but I've always kept my mouth shut from running more than it should. I say what's on my mind, or I don't say anything. However, by the time I got in front of those cameras on Club Shay Shay, when I knew the whole world was watching, I decided I'd had enough of not saying what needed to be said. I was tired of the world. I was sick of all the cheap comedians stealing my jokes, the higher-ups using money to coax people into humiliating themselves, and the whole culture for glorifying the people who sell their souls for fame and fortune. Some kind of switch inside me got flipped and I opened up the floodgates about everything I know. So Kat, do you believe the Illuminati is real? Are you deaf? Yes, I think the Illuminati is real. It's most certainly a real organization and I don't lie, so you know it's the truth. What kind of things that have happened could you point to that would make sense if they were real? They got Kevin Hart to wear the dress, didn't they? Dude probably has more dresses in his closet than my daughter's and all of the female section at Costco combined. <laughs> I know a lot of people think I was just there to stir things up to stay relevant, but I didn't care about any of that. I wasn't there for laughs, although I know I'm still funny. I was up there to expose the truth. It wasn't just about the beef, but then again, there was a lot of that. And what about Steve Harvey? What about him? The fact that I killed his stand-up career by beating him so bad in a comedy battle? Then he took his big old bald Mr. Potato Head looking eye and shiny veneers to family feud until his toupee fell off? And now the only funny thing he can say are the jokes that he stole from me? What else is there to say? God damn it! <laughs> After almost three hours of filming, we finally called it a wrap. I'd had more to drink than I do on a usual night. So I didn't want to hang around very long before getting to my home. I left Shannon's studio and stepped outside of his house to wait for my ride to pull up. Shannon's place was huge and way out in the middle of the woods, and by the time I got out it was dark. So naturally, I was a little spooked by the remoteness. Unfortunately, I immediately noticed something was off when the limo pulled up. 
It wasn't my limo. An entire group of men in matching suits and masks got out and stared me down like a firing squad. I turned right around and started banging on the door, screaming for Shannon to let me back in. Shannon! Let me in! I messed up bad, man! Open the goddamn door now! Shannon! I thought those guys were going to drag me into the trunk of that limo and drive it off a cliff, but they just stared at me until I finally broke down the door. And what I saw next gave me the utter chills. I saw that they had already gotten to him too. Two men in the same outfits were standing over him, tied up on the floor with duct tape over his mouth to keep him quiet. I looked back outside, and the other ones were starting to close in on me. I made a last ditch effort to escape and bolted into the woods. I kept running deeper and deeper, freaked out of my mind. The longer I ran, the darker the woods became. Then, out of nowhere, I saw a light, like a campfire. I ran toward it, but what I saw made me leap into a bush and hide. It wasn't a group of campers. It was more of those suited masked men and women in the Illuminati gathered in a meeting. Everyone was dressed in all their fancy clothes and wearing the same masks, except for a man who stood over them all on a stage. He was wearing a black cloak like the Grim Reaper. Everyone was watching and listening to him preach. We all must come together and find the man who has been exposing our secrets. And then we must make him pay with his blood. We must find Cat Williams. Ah! I screwed up again. They all got quiet and looked at me. Then all at once they started chasing me. I ran away with the whole mob coming after me. I tried to put everything I had into sprinting as fast as I could. But instead, I tripped. Don't kill me! Have mercy! Ah! Cat! Cat! Hey, Cat! You good? Huh? <laughs> oh, man. That cognac must be hitting you, huh? Not as hard as when I take a hit off my dealer's death. One little puff and then I can't hear shit! Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on. Are you sure you still want me to upload this? You know, you might get an angry mob and a limo coming after you, right? Or maybe they'll turn your fans against you. I could take you down. No more women, no more groupies. None of them will want you anymore. What women, sir? These are hoes. I'm a pimp named Slickback. Say it with me now. This happened in 2007, around Valentine's Day. I guess most relationships tend to lose their magic as people get older. I just never thought that it would happen so soon. When my husband James and I were young, we were so romantic with each other, and we'd always take the time to go out together and have fun. We had a great physical relationship too. Now it was different though. As we got older, we started working more and adding a lot more stress to our lives. And I guess we just fell out of the habit of spending time together. I couldn't remember the last time we'd been out on a date and unfortunately ruined our intimacy too. We hadn't done anything in years. It was starting to affect me. I barely even felt like I had a husband anymore. I didn't want to cheat on him, but I had urges to, and I knew it would happen eventually if something didn't change. The problem was, we tried countless times and nothing worked. It was like my husband wasn't even attracted to me anymore. We rented tapes from an adult store and watched online movies, but they didn't help. I bought a bunch of nice lingerie to try to make myself more appealing to him, but he barely even seemed to notice. We even tried different oils and supplements, but those had no effect either. I didn't know what else to do. I often recommended that he take happy pills, but he always avoided the conversation when I brought it up. James claimed that they weren't good long term, and he didn't want to depend on them. I had begged him multiple times, but he always refused, so we continued to have the same problem, and there didn't seem to be any solution. After so long of not being together in that way, we started to have other issues too. We began to argue and fight all the time. It wasn't even always about the happy pills either. Sometimes we would fight over almost nothing at all. There was always a lot of tension between us no matter what was going on. It became so insane that we didn't even sleep in the same room anymore. Most days we barely spoke to each other. I could tell that my husband blamed me for most of it, but I think it was more just to make himself feel better. He had to feel guilty that we couldn't be intimate but he still refused to try the pills. Then, after this had been going on for some time, it began to get even worse. James seemed to be slowly losing his mind, 
Sometimes I would hear him snap downstairs when I was going to bed. It would be all quiet, and then I would suddenly hear him screaming and banging around. That woman ruined me! She ruined my anaconda! I hate her! It all tended to be similar to that. It seemed like he totally hated me. I didn't know what was pushing him over the edge, but it sounded like he was going completely insane. I began to be scared for my life. James continued to get worse, and I didn't fully know what he could be capable of. If he blamed me for everything that was going wrong, then what would stop him from deciding to get rid of me? I grew depressed. I considered divorcing him, but I didn't know how he would take it. It just seemed like such an extreme option. We had been happy together once. I wanted to get back to that point, but everything was so bad. I didn't know if it was possible to fix it. Then, one day I decided to take matters into my own hands. It was close to Valentine's Day, and I decided that I would discreetly purchase some happy pills myself. Then one night, I told my husband that we should try and be together one more time. I told him that I had a feeling that it would be different. James didn't seem too confident, but he reluctantly agreed. Just before I went into the bedroom, I crushed up a couple of the happy pills and roofied his wine. He had no idea what I had done, but it made all the difference. We were finally able to be together. After that night, we started enjoying life more. Our relationship began to get a lot better, and we fought way less. It seemed like solving that one issue was just what we needed to remind ourselves that we could still love each other. It really became nice. Any night that we wanted to be together, I would do the same thing and roofie his wine. It worked every time, and James had no clue what I was doing. I was so relieved that we seemed to be getting our lives back. Then, one night, it all went wrong. It was Valentine's Day, and my husband and I actually decided to celebrate it for the first time in a while. We went out for a fancy dinner and then returned home to be together again. I wanted it to be an extra special night, so I decided to crush up some extra happy pills to put in his wine. I just wanted to make sure that everything went really well. The only problem was, that same night, James popped a few happy pills himself in preparation for the big night ahead of him. He too was trying to make it extra special. If I had only known, things might have been different, but James wanted me to be surprised. After drinking his wine, I could immediately tell that something was wrong. He clutched at his chest and seemed to be having trouble breathing. Then, he suddenly dropped his glass, shattering it completely. Then he fell to the floor. He wasn't moving. James! James! James died just a few minutes later. I called for help immediately, but they were too late to save him. It was revealed that James had taken a harmful dose of the happy pills, and the cops arrested me that same day for murdering my husband. I tried to explain what happened, but they wouldn't listen. I spent the rest of Valentine's Day in jail. The whole time I was there, I kept wishing that I would have just told James what I had done. Everything might have turned out differently. This story was inspired by a horrific incident that happened around the Valentine's Day of 2007. In an attempt to spice up their lagging love life, the wife of a 50-year-old Italian construction worker spiked his wine with two crushed up quote-unquote happy pills. Later on, the man suffered a severe heart attack. The man was immediately transported to the hospital and miraculously survived. 